You know, the most amazing thing about nature, and that I discovered in my book, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, is that everything is absolutely reducible to two principles, force and motion and inertia and acceleration. Now, what props up 100% of the visible universe is magnetism. There are only two principles, force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Everything that gives volume to uh, energy is magnetism. Magnetism reciprocates and expresses itself, as per my discovery, as a reciprocating processional hyperboloid. Now, how do you express a reciprocating processional hyperboloid, and what is it, and why does it, why does it extrapolate itself as a hypertrochoid? And of course, you asked the question, what is a hypertrochoid? A hypertrochoid a lot of people tell them a spirograph pattern, and then they know what you're talking about as far as the pattern. Here's a real picture that I took under the ferrocell of a magnet. You can see the hypertrochoid, i.e. spirograph pattern of magnetic field reciprocation. What is space? Nothing other than denotatively, not connotatively, but the after effect of the loss of inertia as expressed by magnetism which leaves the posterior attribute of space in its wake. Now this is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional toroidal where magnetism reciprocates from quote-unquote North Pole to quote-unquote South Pole and inversely so, but it really is the case that magnetism, which Faraday called the dielectric field, the loss of inertia, which is extrapolating and expressing itself in a circle, is actually two-dimensional. So while we think of what props up the universe as three-dimensional, what gives volume to every atom in picometers is actually not magnetism, but the wake, the after-effect of the loss of inertia, which is space, as uh, Nikola Tesla and others have stated that Space is neither a field, well this is actually my saying, but Tesla said the same thing, that space is neither a field nor a force. It can act on nothing, it does nothing of itself or of its own accord. So the two-dimensional expression of this toroidal uh, hypertrochoid, which is a hyperboloid loss of inertia expressing force in motion, which reciprocates, which defines what magnetism is, which, oddly enough, the Ojibwe Indians, uh, actually, you've probably seen these before. These are uh, they're, uh, little dream catchers uh, that they created, which have uh, hypertrochoid formations in the center of them. But um, it wasn't discovered until uh, the invention of the ferrocell cell that uh, that is a coherent magnetic reciprocation can only be uh, expressed by a hypertrochoid. Now, nobody figured that I figured out why it does that or how it does that until I discovered and explained uh, why this pattern is created by a magnet. I also found out that magnetism, the same way as in the golden angle, which is 137.5077 degrees, so you can see the actual spirograph or hypertrochoid pattern for example, in the sunflower, you can actually see that. You can compare the two side by side. You see the hypertrochoid pattern here and here. They're both identical. Um, I don't know what sort of natural uh, or uh, numinal uh, principles the Ojibwe Indians were actually uh, channeling to uh, come up with this, but this formation, this uh, hypertrochoidal formation, defines 100% of the visible universe. Now, this is uh, irrefutable, and but... Uh, I'm, if I die tomorrow, if I have a heart attack or get hit by a car, of course I'm still working on the fourth edition of my book, but the one thing I can actually die proud of is that I'm the first person in the world to give a full and accurate, detailed, uh, total explanation of how magnetism works, why it works, and this is, this is my discovery here as well, actually, uh, how... The very simplex uh, mathematical formula for uh, magnetic divergence and convergence. There still, however, is also, as I also discovered, a phase shift that I predicted that is part of electromagnetic, uh, excuse me, electromagnetic retardation, which must define a spatial creation divergence, which must be expressed 
Uh, and here's the electromagnetic uh, retardation phase shift. Uh, this is a genuine picture of a hypertrochoidal uh, magnet as seen underneath the ferro cell, which is, expresses itself as 111 and uh, 1 plus uh, 1 over uh, 5 to the power of negative 3, or basically 1.123606. Anyway, they're all expressions of phi, but this is the EM retardation, which occurs as a phase shift, which, as per the prior videos, also causes the uh, the, uh, the the phase shift of uh, magnetodielectric retardation. There's either rarefaction or compression. There's rarefaction on the North Pole and compression on the South Pole. And here, you can actually see from genuine light... This is LED light shot over the surface of a magnet. You can actually see that magnetodielectric retardation phase shift that, uh, for example, um, now Dr. Olaf D. Jefferminko didn't know or understand this, but he, you know, he wrote an extensive book on uh, EM retardation. But uh, this is my discovery here. This is the actual formula for what defines the entire universe as far as the magnetic reciprocation. Um, this is empirically valid, and uh, here's the formula for it. Uh, I discovered it, and like I said, if I croak tomorrow from a heart attack or a car accident or something, I can at least say that I died having discovered one of the great mysteries of the universe and have being the first person to do so. It just makes me so... This is a real picture, too. You can actually see the, the books underneath the, uh, the magnet that's being held there by the hand. This is looking at the ferro cell. And you can see the center here is the uh, hypertrochoidal uh, formation. Now, neither the inventor or the person that greatly studied it, uh, they expl explicitly stated they didn't know why that formation uh, existed, but I understood it perfectly. I mean, it's no different than uh, what plumbers understand about why water runs downhill, for example. It is the expression of necessitated pressure mediation by which the only uh, force in motion principle of the universe, i.e. magnetism, i.e. the loss of inertia, or as Michael Faraday called it, the dielectric field, can express itself, and that can only be expressed, this discovery is from mine, copyright uh, 10, 2014, a reciprocating processional hyperboloid. I mean, uh, light is being influenced vis-a-vis -vis the Faraday effect by the magnetism that it is uh, running over. And since light is a longitudinal dielectric pulse or ether perturbation with uh, necessitated uh, electrical and magnetic uh, transverse uh, elements. Um, whether that's a circularly polarized uh, light or otherwise doesn't matter. You still have transverse EM distinctions. That's the, uh, the, the phase at which uh, light can only be induced due to its uh, transverse components, which we define as the speed of light. But this is magnetism as painted by the light that is shot over top of it. And it can only express itself that way. And it's a golden ratio expression. Uh, here you can see the hypertrochoidal formation like in a sunflower. It exists in other places in nature. But, um, you know, as of uh, last year, you know, this is my discovery, my formula. And uh, I knew that uh, this must be the case. And uh, it accurately describes why this is it explains uh, everything about magnetism the phase shift of magnetism as you can see here i calculated this before i actually observed it and once i observed it then you know it's i, I validated it i mean i knew it could only exist that way you know mother nature unlike the premise of quantum mechanics and general relativity is not an insane crack whore you know, with virtual photons, muons, glue, you know, they, they've uh, defined the whole universe as the principle of uh, these uh, unicorn and fairy dust particles rolling around and bumping into each other like a giant rain stick. And, you know, Mother Nature, i.e. nature, does not work that way. Everything is absolutely irreducible to two principles, force in motion and inertia and acceleration. Gravity itself is not an autonomous force or principle, is merely dielectric acceleration. There's no force applied in letting go of a ball at a certain height and letting it accelerate towards the dielectric center where force, everything over here is increasing force in motion. Everything in this direction is decreasing force in motion, i.e. increasing acceleration. Of course, we think wrongly that increasing acceleration is like throwing your foot 
on the pedal of your car and increasing speed, but that's actually the expenditure of force in motion by burning gasoline. So that's not actual acceleration, that's the expenditure of chemical force. So humans have a really wrong deep connotation in their minds of uh, acceleration. That's all we think of when we think in terms of acceleration. But uh, true uh, field theory uh, acceleration is something wholly different. That is something that does not involve uh, force in motion, rather the erasure of a force in motion. Right now we're expressing force in motion, which must necessarily, as field reciprocations, uh, uh, mediate themselves, return to inertia and acceleration. And this pattern that you can see here that I'm creating with a very simplex application, this is basically a child's program, you know, that I'm creating this on. But uh, this uh, two dimensional representation of force and motion, which creates this hypertrochoidal formation, or what most people would call, oh, it's the spirograph pattern. You know, it's the necessitated field pressure mediation of how magnetism can and must express itself. And here's the empirical, you know, observational criteria for obviously what it is. I mean, these are real pictures. These are real pictures of magnetism, but uh, nobody understood why they were that way or how they were that way until I, you know, I uh, fully explained it. And uh, not only have I fully explained it, I mean, I've, uh, you know, I, I've got like 300 and 50 some more pages to add to the book, but this is the mathematical formula for uh, the entire principle of force and motion in the universe, how and why it extrapolates uh, itself and, uh, and uh, the magnitudes by which it does extrapolate. I mean, it's just divinely simple. I mean, it's so simplex. It's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not simple, but it is simplex. Um, it's the only way that uh, nature can express itself uh, through the loss of inertia. Like I said, you got to remember that this is an irreducible fact, that 100% of the visible universe is propped up by magnetism, not dielectricity, and not electrostatics, not electricity. Electricity is a hybrid, by the way. Electricity is phi times psi. It's dielectricity times magnetism, which equals Q and Planck, i.e. electrification. So. There is no such principle as gravity. Gravity is nothing other than the erasure of force and motion. As Tesla said, of course, space itself has no properties. We're talking about the erasure of force and motion, which is expressed as increasing mutual acceleration of masses, and those masses are defined as quasi-stable force and motion inertia acceleration bubbles which of course have a nucleus, which are constantly expressing themselves. Even the idiots of quantum mechanics and general relativity and, uh, and uh, all branches of science will state that, well, 99.999999% of an atom is empty space. But that's not true. Um, what is here, if this is or the model of an atom, which it is, if it were a coherent atom, this is how it expresses itself, is a two-dimensional toroid, which is, expand, which is expressed as a three-dimensional toroidal force and motion reciprocation. Now, you're only seeing two-dimensional reciprocation vis-a-vis -vis my drawing here, but what you can see, what you can't see, is the fact that it is expressing and extrapolating itself as a reciprocating processional hyperboloid which navigates out this hypertrochoidal formation. That is the only way that force and motion can express itself. Now, while this is a 2D drawing, you actually can see the three-dimensionality of the toroidal shape, which defines this. But the interatomic volume of an atom is not empty. It is a sheer magnetodielectricity. That is the air of the balloon that props up each and every atom and therefore magnetism is that which connotatively and denotatively is 100 percent of the visible universe now uh, light of course itself has volume but is a longitudinal expression of dielectric interference is a pulse modulation with necessitated transverse electrical and magnetic components the phase shift and frequency of light uh, most photographers obviously couldn't give a crap about this, but uh, it's fascinating for those that, you know, 
like some of us, are kind of interested in knowing the basis and principles of the entire mechanics of the universe. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope it didn't bore you to tears, and catch you later.